This is chapter three, and it's an overview of the retail planning and management process. You do not have a case study for this chapter. I want you reading the chapter and just completing the quiz for chapter three. Um, this chapter is more the holistic view of what all the different pieces in your retail management plan will contain. So I want you looking at it from just a starting to get comfortable point of view. As an example, in week three, we'll take a look more closely at developing a mission statement. So within mission statement, you're looking at what do you do as a company? What do you do well? What makes your company unique and different? It's generally written for the internal audience, the stakeholders within the company, but it's also made available to the customer so that they can see where you're coming from as a business. Your textbook gives you some example mission statements. And if you do a Google search, it brings up thousands and thousands of mission statements. So when you do work on yours for your pop-up store, you'll be able to see what else is out there, pick the pieces that you like, and then craft your own based on what you see as important. Later in the term, you're going to be writing a vision statement. So just a reminder, the mission statement is what do we do, or what do we do, what makes us different? It's focused on the now. The vision statement answers the question, where do we want to be in the future? So why, how, what are our values, and that long-term aspect. It also includes some vision statements so that you can get an idea for what they have in, um, included. Objectives are a critical component to business and to retail, but they have to be measurable. Increase sales. Well, that's useless. Does that mean I increase 1% or 20%, 200%? It has to be a specific number. You have to be able, at the end of the measuring period, you have to be able to say, yes, I reached that goal, or no, I did not reach that goal. If you can't answer numerically a yes or no to the objective, then it is not measurable. And as a reminder, objectives need to be in SMART format, and that is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So make sure that the objectives that you set meet those criteria. Once you have your objectives in place and your objectives tie into that mission statement, then you develop your situational analysis. What's going on in the world? What's happening that's affecting the outcomes or the objectives that I have set for myself? What are the challenges that I'm facing? And this goes back to SWOT analysis. What are my strengths and weaknesses? What are the opportunities and threats? I scan the environment. So what is my competition doing? What is my indirect competition doing? What are the external environmental factors that are playing into things? Is the economy starting to get a little hinky? So people may have less discretionary income and they may be looking to save just to protect themselves. Are they feeling confident so that they have that money and they're willing to put it out there and buy themselves a few extra things? Is there anything happening on the international um, table? that we need to be aware of that could affect our economy as a whole. As a business person, you have to be aware of all of that environmental, or all of those environmental details on a daily basis. So it's important that you're well-read and current on what's going on. 
When you've done your research, you know what's going on around you, you're ready to develop your retail strategy. So based on your objectives that you've set, the factors that are going on in the environment, you set your strategy. So what is it that you're going to do in order to reach your goals? And that's what we'll set up as a little later in the term. What are the actions that you're going to take in order to make your objectives possible? You'll be looking at targeting specific markets for your products, both within the way you lay out your store and the products that you sell, to how you'll decide that you're going to make marketing available for those products. You can't afford to sell to everybody, nor would you want to, because that would dilute your marketing funds significantly. If the majority of your customers are 20 to 35, yes, you might sell to someone in their 50s, but you're not going to get as much or as, as big a bang for your buck as you would if you were to target your market and your marketing efforts to that 20 to 35 age range. We'll be looking at financial operations. You'll be setting up a sample budget and looking at what it takes to be able to order product, what it takes to be able to pay the bills, and how you might be able to finance things in order to uh, work most effectively to make the highest profit. We'll discuss logistics and supply chain management. In the retail environment, you're likely working with multiple supply chain members. So being able to keep everyone straight and understand how the best ways to work with people can be a challenge. We'll also touch on human resources management and being able to build a workforce that's effective for a retail environment. We'll discuss pricing and different formats that you can use for pricing to be able to use that element as a branding mechanism. We'll repeatedly get into the laws and ethics of a retail environment and we'll look at evaluating the success of, an, of a retail location. But as I mentioned at the beginning, this chapter is an overview chapter. I want you to really understand the information in it, but understand this is the big picture viewpoint. Then we're going to drill down to each one of these areas throughout the term.